everybody! So do you remember how I told you that beautiful soup is so efficient and so simple and it's perfect for web scraping? There's actually an easier way. What if I told you that beautiful soup has a much prettier and much smarter daughter named mechanical soup and it will change your life? Well, not exactly, but it will allow you to do so much more with less lines of code. So thank you so much, Benny and Rohit, for pointing it out on Facebook. I absolutely had to share your advice because it would be irresponsible of me just to keep it to myself. In this video, we're going to do something much cooler than in the previous. We're going to mimic the famous cats vs dogs database, completely automating the process of finding images and saving them. So instead of navigating to Google Images, searching for a term, downloading each individual image and saving it in a new local directory, we are going to use our coding skills to do it much faster and much more efficiently. Because we all know that repeating the exact same action a million times is not a good practice. So let's avoid it. The modules we'll be using in this tutorial are Mechanical Soup for the web scraping, OS, to help us with creating a new directory and wget to help us with downloading the files. So if you're ready to step up your web scraping game, let's start a new notebook and this time, surprise surprise, I'll be using Jupyter Notebook for that, but you can follow along in Colab. And since we're using Jupyter, we'll need to install the modules before we can import them. So make sure you've activated your environment and we can install our mechanical soup inside it with conda install dash c conda dash forge mechanical soup. And since I already have it installed on my computer, you guys will not get the exact comments I'm getting, so don't worry about it. And we'll also need to install wget, this time with pip install wget, and this module will help us with saving the photos. And now we can run Jupyter Notebook navigate to the folder we want, start a new Python 3 notebook, and rename it to Mechanical Soup. So first, we'll import Mechanical Soup and use its functionality to open the URL of our web page. To do so, we'll need to create a browser object with browser equals mechanical soup dot stateful browser in camel case and round brackets. This object will allow us to enter commands without the need of creating new variables. You'll see what I mean shortly. We'll also need the URL of Google Images, so let's quickly find it in our browser. And make sure you're using Google Images URL and not google.com, otherwise you may not get the same results. Back in our code, we'll create a new URL variable and store the address we just copied. Now we can make the first command with browser.openurl, which will request the page. And just to double check that our command worked, we'll type print browser.get underscore URL, and this should return the URL of the current page we're on. Let's run the cell, and yep, looks like we got it. Now it's time to extract the HTML from the web page. We'll do this with browser.get current page and run the cell. And here's our HTML, easy peasy. And we finally got to the interesting part where we'll need to target the search field. Fortunately, Mechanical Soup has a very easy way of targeting input fields and we don't even need developer tools for that. We simply type browser.select underscore form, which will target all our input tags and right below we'll type Browser dot get current form dot print summary. And once we run the cell, we are presented with all the available input fields on the page. I'm assuming the input we want to target is this one, but let's quickly double check with the developer tools. And yep, looks like I was correct. We'll need to target the input element named Q. So back in our notebook, we can simply do this with typing browser square brackets and inside them the name value of the input we're selecting. In our case, it's going to be Q. 
and this equals to the search term we're looking to enter. Let's start with cat, and I'm actually going to create a variable for that because we'll end up searching for dog images as well, and that way it's gonna be a little bit more organized. Okay, so if we run the cell now, nothing is going to happen. This is because we didn't push our search command back to the web page yet. For this, we'll need to use browser.launchbrowser, which will type cat inside the search box, and then we'll need to submit our search and collect the response. So, response equals browser.submitSelected. And we're going to print two things. Since by searching cat, Google is redirecting us to another page, I would like to make sure that our URL is different now. So I'll print my new URL with browser.getURL. And I also want to print the content of our response with print response.text, which should return the HTML. So let's run the cell. And yay, the URL is indeed different, and it also links to the page we require. The response text also looks good, so we can move on with targeting all the images. First, I want to store our new URL in a variable. So new underscore URL equals browser.getURL. And now we can request the page with browser.open new URL. And similarly to what we did with the previous page, we'll get the HTML here too, but this time we'll have to create a new variable for that. So we'll call it page and it equals to browser.getCurrentPage. And since we already know we're looking to target all the images, we can simply do that with all underscore images equal page dot find underscore all and inside the round brackets, we'll specify the HTML image tag, which is IMG. Now let's go ahead and print this variable. That looks awesome, but we don't really need the entire image tag. We only need the source value. So I usually like to tackle this with an empty list and a for loop. So I'll create image underscore source, assign it to an empty list, and right below we'll iterate over our images with for image in all underscore images and instead of keeping the entire image we'll only keep the value of the source attribute so image equals image dot get and inside the round brackets we'll specify the source attribute with src and then we are going to store it in our empty list with image underscore source dot append image and let's print it and run the cell. So for the most part, it's okay, but we'll still need to tackle the broken or incomplete links before we can move on. So using list comprehensions, we'll type image underscore source equals square brackets image for image in image underscore source if image dot starts with and inside the round brackets will include HTTPS. So let's print it. And yay, we got rid of all the bad links. Now we can finally move on with saving the images. For that, we'll need to create a new directory. So we'll import OS to help us with that. And we'll also import wget to help us with saving. First, we'll define our path with path equals os.getcwd, which will return the current directory we're in. In my case, it's C, Users, Maria, Python, Lessons, and Mechanical Soup. In here, I would like to create a new folder. So I'll join this specific path with the name I want the folder to have. So path now equals to os.path.join, and inside the round brackets, the first parameter is path, which is the current location, and the second parameter is cats, which would be the name of the directory. And actually, I'm going to replace it with concatenating the search term string, cat, with s to create the exact same word. And I do this because I want the process to be automatic when I switch the search term to dogs. And now we can command our computer to create this local directory with os.mechdeer for our path. 
So let's run the cell and quickly check that it happened. And yep, we have a new folder named cats. Perfect. Now let's save all the photos with the help of a for loop. First, I'll initialize a counter variable, which will help us keep track with naming the individual images. So for now, counter equals zero, and we'll do this outside of the loop. Right below, we'll type for image in image underscore source, and here I'll create an internal variable, save underscore s, which will hold our path and the image names. So os.path.join, the first parameter stands for the path, of course, and the second stands for the name. So here's an example of the names I want to get, cat1.jpg. But because we don't want to use hard coding here, I will concatenate existing variables to do so. So search term plus the string conversion of counter plus dot jpeg. Then we can save our images with wget dot download. The first parameter is the image we're looking to download, and the second parameter would be our variable save s, which as mentioned before includes the location and the desired name to the file. And lastly, we'll set up our counter to plus equals one so that each image will have a different serial number. And we're ready to run the cell, so let's do shift enter. Once the cell finished processing, we'll go back to our directory, open the cats folder, and double check our images are there. And yep, look at all these beautiful kitties. Now because we've done such a good job with our code in our previous cells, so the only thing we'll do is change cat to dog in our search term variable and rerun all the cells. And because we avoided hard coding, we can actually do the same with even bears and moose and bison or whichever animal or object that you have in mind. So let's double check in our directory. And yay, we've got some dog images too. If you want to double check how the folder looks on your computer, it's going to be very similar to this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.